2020 started with a new head coach. The bottom line is I heard bells. I am anxious and excited to get to work on winning the next Super Bowl for the Dallas Cowboys. It was an offseason like never before. But I'll assure you, Tex, Tom Landry, they didn't have these circumstances in mind. We might well just cancel that word because it was no such thing as an offseason. But the expectations remain high. Oh, this is probably the t most talented team I've been on. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is the best team I've been on so far. I'm excited to show fans what this, this team has, has been about and growing towards. The goal is even higher. I think the uh, sky's the limit. Uh, you know, we're in this to win a championship. Make no bones about it. We're focused on, you know, trying to bring that championship back to Dallas. Buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to be a long, long year. 2020, what a time to remember. And boy, did we do some good. It all starts tonight in Los Angeles. Ready to play some football now, baby. We're down to the wire. It's the season debut of Cowboys Game Day on CBS 11. And there it is, brand spanking new $5 billion SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. There may not be a lot of people there nine hours from now, but the Dallas Cowboys and Los Angeles Rams will be there. And inside the CBS 11 studios for the first time in more than six months, we are here for the start of the 23rd consecutive season of Cowboys game day. And welcome, finally, to the first Sunday of the National Football League season, the 61st season of Dallas Cowboys football and NFL Sunday that three months ago, even one month ago, we weren't sure would ever happen. But here we are, Bill Jones inside the studio for the first time since March 11th. Keith Russell at his home, Desmond Purnell at AT&T Stadium. Gentlemen, we made it. Keith, it is football time, and do we ever need it? Uh, yes, we do, Bill and Desmond. And so let me put my readers on, because this is what the offseason has been like. We haven't really been allowed to cover the practices, so I have to look at the roster and say, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> who, who is that? But you know what? More than the people I don't know, there are a lot of players I do know. This team is stacked with talent. And in case anyone forgot, Jerry Jones, he was born in L.A. He was instrumental to helping the NFL return to L.A. So he's a big part of that SoFi Stadium. And SoFi, isn't it known for loans? Well, Jerry deals in all cash. And Desmond, the Cowboys are about to cash in. I'm going all in. They're cashing in this year. I, I see we haven't learned from last year's lessons when you and Bill both were in Oxnard, California, predicting the Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl. And what happened? They missed the playoffs. So, again, guys, we haven't learned from last year. Keep those expectations in check. I do think they're going to have a successful season. I do think they're improved. Just getting the new head coach, Mike McCarthy, makes this team better. But, hey, guys, 2020 in general has been a crazy year, very crazy. But even though we're social distancing, I'm just happy that we're all back here together on air to talk a little football. That's right. We'll have our bold predictions for the season at the end of the, sh end of the show. So much to get to over the next half hour. A 7:20 kickoff for the Cowboys and Rams in L.A. This after an offseason and a training camp like none we have seen before. Mike McCarthy, the new head coach. Dak playing on the franchise tag. The Cowboys add two potential starters in the draft. Trayvon Diggs in the second round at cornerback. C.D. Lamb to go along with the new $100 million man, Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup at receiver and the Cowboys are embracing the highest of expectations this season. Uh, so I mean you know we're we're focused on you know trying to bring that championship back to Dallas and that's going to be our expectations every time we touch the field. We, we got something to prove this year um, not only this defense but this entire team. Just look at the look at the depth chart look at the roster uh, just look how many you know pro bowlers how many all pro guys we have a uh, out there. Uh, a lot of excitement, obviously, for what this offense uh, is going to be and what we can be. Um, but I mean, I'm just as excited to see uh, our defense and our special teams. Just excited to see this team come together. I'm not here to, to try to just, you know, get a few more years on my belt. I'm, I'm here to win championships. It, it, it was clearly my personal um, quest. And when Jerry Jones, you know, blessed me with this opportunity, it, it, it's, you know, it, to me, it, that, that's a given. Mike McCarthy, 13 years the head coach of the Green Bay Packers, winning a Super Bowl in Arlington nearly a decade ago, replacing Jason Garrett. He doesn't shy away from the expectations, and neither does his quarterback. Keith, Dak Prescott led the number one ranked offense in the league last year, but has even more to prove this year, doesn't he? 
Oh, he has a lot to prove on so many different levels. And not only were the Cowboys the number one offense in football, by the way, the Rams have given up the most points as a defense since 2018. So advantage Cowboys. But it goes more off the field for Dak in terms of what he has to prove. He was brave enough recently to talk about uh, suffering from depression following the loss of his brother this all season. Of course, years ago, he also lost his mom. This man has been through a lot. He continues to persevere. And he is the leader of this team, unquestioned. He didn't get his long-term extension. But guess what? He says, I want to be a cowboy for life. I'm rolling with Dak Prescott because even though he was ranked number 46 in terms of the league's best players, Desmond, he is number one, number one when it comes to heart. That is for sure. Um, I'm on the same page with you, Keith. Statistically, I expect Dak to have an even better year than he did a year ago, but his professionalism, his high character, through my eyes, already makes him a winner. You go back, well, number one, he's a black quarterback. You already know that you're, you're unfairly evaluated when you're in that position. He came in as a, as a fourth round draft pick, came in, took the position from Tony Romo, hasn't looked back since. As you mentioned, Keith, he lost his mom to cancer back in 2013. Earlier this year, he lost his brother to suicide he's transparent enough he's honest enough to share that he's battled that he was battling depression and anxiety and what happens you got you got jabronis like skip bayless on national tv unfairly criticizing the man but yet and still he handled all of that adversity with 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 superhuman level grace so through my eyes i don't care if he goes out there and throws five interceptions tonight his character his professionalism alone makes him a winner as far as i'm concerned and the Cowboys gave him another weapon in the offseason. In the first round of the draft, C.D. Lamb joins Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. Keith, could this be three 1,000-yard receivers this season? In the future, yes. This year, I don't know. It's only happened five times in NFL history. The last time coming in 2008 with Larry Fitzgerald and Quan Bolding and, and Steve Breston. Who remembers Steve Breston? So the third wheel is always seemingly the weakest wheel. In this case, C.D. Lamb has unprecedented talent. The only thing I wonder is how quickly he can pick up the NFL game. He looks great in practice, but now we're about to see the real thing. It's only happened five times before. In the future, if they keep this group together, yes. Three 1,000-yard receivers on the same team. I mean, Gallup and Amari did it last year. So what's one more? I think it can happen. What about you, Desmond? But in the future. It can happen, but it won't be this year. A lot of things have to go right in order for three 1,000-yard receivers to be on the same team. And especially, this is Mike McCarthy's first year as head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I think it can happen. I think this, this trio of receivers are good, but I don't see it happening this year. Amari Cooper, he and Dak uh, Prescott, they have great chemistry, but Amari, we know he has a history of injuries. He's dealing with a sore hamstring now. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, we've heard about how great he looks at practice, but yet and still, there's been no offseason. Training camp is shortened. There was no preseason, so we haven't seen him line up against anybody that does not have a Dallas Cowboy uniform on. So I just say pump the brakes, pump the brakes just a bit. Pump the brakes just a bit. I think they're going to be good, but not three 1,000-yard receivers good. And I'm looking forward tonight, Amari Cooper against Jalen Ramsey, two $100 million men signing contracts in the offseason. All right, how about Zeke Elliott and Mike McCarthy's offense? Keith, is he the focus of this offense? Absolutely. Who, who thinks he's not? <laughs> only the fools think that Zeke is not going to be used and used some more. There's only one time since he's come into the league and he's played a full season that he didn't lead the league in rushing. And that was last year. He came up short to Derrick Henry. That's it. The man is the best running back in football. I don't care what anybody else has to say. If you don't use him, Desmond, you're foolish. Wow. wow. Wow, I, I, I wouldn't go that far, Keith. Again, you need to pump the brakes, Keith. I'm not going to say he's the best, but he's definitely amongst the top. I think if they feed Zeke, that's going to transform into more success for the Cowboys as a team because it keeps that defense off the field. And again, 
no shade intended, but the defensive unit, that's the weak side, that's the, the weak link in this team. But with Zeke, I want to see what type of shape he comes in. We all saw that it took him several games to kind of get back to the Zeke that we all know and love last year after he held out, missed all of training camp due to that contract extension. Tonight, will Zeke be at full speed? Will he hit his stride coming out the gates, or will it take him several games to kind of warm up and get into things? I'm anxious to see that tonight. And how will this Cowboys offensive line handle Aaron Donald and Cam Irving starts for Lyle Collins at right tackle? Coming up, well, how will the Cowboys handle the national anthem tonight? We'll discuss, but first, time for our Sam Pack family of dealerships trivia question. Mike McCarthy won a Super Bowl with the Packers in his fifth year in Green Bay. Only four head coaches have won a Super Bowl in their first season with their new team. Can you name them? We'll have the answer after the break. Keith, can you name them? Oh, man, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Well, I'm going to say Brent Mike Kelly, McCarthy because you know? he's going to win it this year with the Cowboys. Cowboys game day is sponsored by Sam Pack's five-star family of dealerships. In our Sam Pack family of dealerships trivia question, we told you only four head coaches have won a Super Bowl in their first season with their new team. Did you know them? How about Baltimore's Don McCafferty beat the Cowboys, San Francisco's George Seifert, the Bucks' John Gruden, and five years ago, it was Denver's Gary Kubiak. These are very sensitive times. I have nothing to prove as far as where I'm standing with the flag and where the Cowboys stand. I have nothing to prove regarding my, my players and my support of our players. What I do want to show and want us all to be a part of is a word called grace. Grace. Grace was the word of the day for Jerry Jones in his press conference kicking off training camp one month ago. Will it be the word of the night tonight as the Cowboys meet the Rams at SoFi Stadium? Bill Jones with Keith Russell and Desmond Purnell. We saw how the Texans and Chiefs handled the national anthems on Thursday night. Let's start with you, Desmond. What will Jerry Jones' team do tonight? Uh, not 100% sure. Uh, we know that there won't be any fans in the arena, so there won't be any booing. And uh, I, I got I to gotta say I was very angry when I saw that coming from the Kansas City fans. 2020 is supposed to be the year of change. It's supposed to be um, a year of where everyone listens. You would think something as basic as human rights and equality, so that would be something applauded. But instead, the, the fans from Kansas City, they, they booed. And, and that effort, that, that gesture, it fell on ignorant and deaf ears. But with that being said, I think it's proof that the players cannot win this, this fight against social injustice on their own. They need sponsors to step up, step up and make themselves assertive. We saw what happened with the Washington football team. Once sponsors got involved, that name was changed. And we also need Jerry Jones to say more and to do more. He's the most influential owner in the NFL. He's a billionaire. When, when he talks, people listen. Considering that 70% of the NFL is African American and these issues concern a lot of people who wear that star on their helmet, I'd like to see Jerry Jones say more than just give our players grace. I'd like to see him do a lot more. You know, as far as I'm concerned, this is not even about what the Cowboys do tonight or do not do. This is bigger than that. You know, one of the comments I've frequently heard is I'm ready for sports without politics. Well, I'm ready for a world without racism. Which one of the, the, these things do you think will happen more quicker than the other? And I love this country. My dad was in the army. These players love this country. It's not about patriotism. It's not about love of the USA. Everyone does. It's about feeling disgusted, sickened, devastated when you see George Floyd kneeled on, Ahmaud Arbery being chased through the streets with a shotgun, Breonna Taylor, and Botham John. When you hear these stories, if you don't feel anything, that's the problem. That's the change that needs to happen. It needs to start in the hearts and minds of people who don't feel this is a big deal because it doesn't affect them. It's not about the players. It's about the change starting there. That's the greatest divide in our country as we speak. And all eyes will be on the Cowboys and the Rams prior to kickoff tonight. Coming up, will the Cowboys' defense be less predictable this season? They say they will. Plus, can Demarcus Lawrence and the defensive line turn up the heat on Jared Goff tonight? We'll break it all down next on Cowboys Game Day.
SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, home of both the Los Angeles Rams and Los Angeles Chargers. Jerry Jones instrumental in helping this happen in L.A. You just knew the Cowboys would open the stadium, and that is happening tonight, a 720 kickoff as we welcome you back here to Cowboys game day. Bill Jones along with Desmond Purnell and Keith Russell. Let's talk about this Dallas defense, which of course has a new defensive coordinator in Mike Nolan. I just love the defensive line coach, Jim Tom Sula, has head, who has head coaching experience himself in this league, and he has just got to love, especially against Jared Goff tonight, his edge rushers. I think Demarcus Lawrence is going to have a big year in this new defense, plus the addition of Everson Griffin, and everybody interested in what Alden Smith is going to do. Keith, the edge rushers, a lot of focus on them tonight. Hey, Alden Smith hasn't played in years, but everyone says he's been one of the most impressive players during training camp. Everson Griffin, he, he's a perennial pro bowler. Now, he had his issues in Minnesota, but he's here now. And Demarcus Lawrence, yeah, everybody focuses on how many sacks he didn't have, but how many double teams did he have last year while Robert Quinn was tearing it up on the other side? And as far as Jim Tonsula, we, we heard how he almost got into a fight with Tyrone Crawford in practice. He demands a lot out of this unit, I think they're going to be flying all over the field tonight. I'm with you on that one, Keith. Of course, Alden Smith, Dak Prescott called him a monster. He's been away for five years. Very excited to see what he brings. And you, then you got Griffin, who's he's a four-time Pro Bowler coming from the Minnesota Vikings. He's under a one-year contract. So he's playing for a little something more than just seasons. He's playing for some dollars and some cents. We saw how that worked out for Robert Quinn uh, a season ago. I expect similar results. And then you got Tank Lawrence. He was coming off that shoulder surgery um, heading into last season. He's 100% healthy. Healthy. This defense won't be as predictable. I'm expecting big things from this Cowboys defensive line. And it uh, looks like it'd probably be a more hybrid defense with Mike Nolan as the D.C. Look at this Rams offense of Sean McVay. No Todd Gurley for the first time. He's in Atlanta now. I, I love this second round draft pick out of Florida State, Cam Akers. But Malcolm Brown out of Texas is the starter. Look at the linebackers, though, Keith. And Leighton Van Der Esch moves to the middle. Jalen Smith freed up as the will linebacker in this system. Leighton Van Der Esch, he has a lot to prove. Think about how high people were on him his rookie year. And think about how everyone fell off the bandwagon last year. I spoke extensively with his father, Darwin Van Der Esch, and he said, wait till you see my son. All he lives for is to bring a title back to Dallas. He's got that extra protection for his neck. He is ready. He said he's ready. He said he is a grown man. And I expect him to play like one tonight, Bill. <laughs> You know, and Desmond, Keith, you take. Do you remember that Chicago? Go ahead, well, Desmond. Bill, do you, do you, Bill, Keith, do you guys do you guys remember last year's matchup against the Chicago Bears, a game that the Cowboys lost? And do you remember how bad they looked on defense? They missed 19 tackles in that game. So more so than the scheme, more so than than anything else, I'm concerned about the tackling. I'm concerned about players being in the right position. Um, that goes for uh, Jalen Smith. That goes for Van Der Esch. Um, injuries are always concerned. You guys mentioned Van Der Esch coming off the neck injury. Sean Lee, he's already starting the season off on the injured reserve list. I, and then there hasn't been a preseason. There hasn't been an offseason. Tackling and health, guys, that's all I'm looking at when it comes to the Cowboys linebackers. Okay, and I'm, I'm looking at that uh, rookie cornerback, Trayvon Diggs, second-round pick out of Alabama mm. and against a very good receiving core with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods leading the way, plus the rookie Van Jefferson uh, for the Rams. Trayvon Diggs listed number one on the depth chart at one of those cornerback spots, and that's a, that's a lot of pressure on a rookie, especially without an offseason, Keith. Yeah, it is a lot of pressure, but one quote he had that really perked my ears up is he said when the ball is in the air, he thinks it's just as much his, if not more, than the wide receivers. Yes, they're going to miss Jordan Lewis, but I think this kid is ready. I don't think he'll be overwhelmed by the spotlight, Bill. And Brandon Carr, by the way, called up to uh, the active roster on Saturday. We'll see if he'll be active for the game tonight. Signed just a week ago, of course, the former Cowboy, who he could help immensely down the road, if not tonight. Is this year the Cowboys finally get back to the Super Bowl? It's prediction time next on Cowboys Game Day. 
SoFi Stadium, located at the former site of the Hollywood Park Race Track in L.A., three miles from LAX, has a fixed translucent roof with open side seats 70,000, but of course, no fans in the stands tonight as the Cowboys play the Rams. So who are we putting our money on if we were betting people? Of course, in our final moments here of Cowboys game day, let's go around the horn, Desmond and Keith. Hey, right, Keith, you got a special guest, it looks like there. All right, we'll give you an opportunity to introduce <laughs> Uh, your little friend there in just a second, but let's uh, start with you, Desmond. Uh, Cowboys record this season. Do they make the playoffs? I got the Cowboys winning 10 games. They will come out of the NFC East, but um, that's as far as I'm going. I'm not going to pick them to win the Super Bowl just yet. Cowboys 13 and 3, number one seed in the NFC. Isn't that right, Libby? <laughs> Libby, isn't that right? Oh, Libby, uh -oh. don't try to get away from me. Not now. Not now. Not now. Yeah, that's right. 13 to 3. Oh, there she goes. Ah, nah. Okay, who are you? Okay, <laughs> who, gone. who are your Super Bowl teams? Desmond, you got Super Bowl teams for us? I got Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints going against quarterback Jesus, Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. I got, uh, obviously, the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Of the course, Chiefs franchise, of by the of way, course. we all know it started in Dallas. Hey, I'm all in. Cowboys Chiefs Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what, Keith? I'm with you. It's an all Dallas Super Bowl. It's the Cowboys oh. against the Dallas Texans. All right, you got to, real quick, you got to score tonight. We got 30 seconds left. A score tonight, Desmond. I got the Cowboys winning 30 to 29. 30 to 29? You go, Keith. Oh, that's ridiculous, Desmond. <laughs> Give him more credit than that. 31 to 10. 31 <laughs> 10. And I'll go with a Cowboy win. Former Ram Greg Zerline with a walk-off field goal to win it. We got the Patriots and Dolphins at noon. NFL Today is next.